Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. It's been a little while since I've done a video, but we've been very busy, both of the print farm and getting other aspects of the business going, trying to get the Amazon sales set up and going there. So, but I'm down here at the print farm. It's Friday afternoon, or actually it's noon Friday and I've got the printers running. We're going to, usually I have them scheduled to quit running sometime on Friday and not run over the weekend, but this time we're going to go ahead and run them tonight and through most of the day tomorrow. And I thought I'd just kind of show you what's going on down here, where in one of my, last videos I think I said something about wanting to put some of these overhead lights on the other side here so I could get more lighting for the printers in that area. And I have the lights over there but uh, we're making the brackets here. Those are the little plastic brackets that I made to be able to mount those lights to the ceiling. So as soon as those are printed we'll be able to hang those lights over there and get a little more light going in here. Uh, this printer down here, it's printing the feet for the table mount. And it also prints these little wire clips. So this printer has two jobs. To print wire clips, it prints about 40 of these at a time. It also prints these feet the rate of about, I'm not sure I'd have to look. I don't think it's printing quite 40 at a time. We just started this printer up here. This one is uh, printing one half of the lap diner, I believe the left side. And this one's about to finish. This is one of the rod ends for the table mount. Uh, we're printing about 10 of those at a time. And over here is the opposite of that. This is the part that connects to the helping hand head. Printing those parts. Ah, they look like this where the parts that we're printing over here, you can see are the opposite of that. And down here we're printing some more of those pieces. And over here we're printing the cup holder for the lap diner in orange. We're printing two of the right side uh, lap diners in orange. We're printing a right side lap, lap diner in blue. And up here we're printing fillers. And on this one, these are the microscope holders that we're printing there. These are brown lap diner right sides. This is a brown lap diner right side and coming around over here on the PEI sheets we're printing these brown lap diner cup holders these are the ones that have come off this printer in the last 24 hours or so and this one's also printing the brown and these are some of the ones that it's printed and orange this one's printed several of the orange ones and this one's also printing the orange it's printed quite a few and this one down here is doing the same thing it's printing the orange and uh, the Creality uh, Ender 3 since we have it down here we brought it down 
for a little competition with the ANAT for comparison, but since it's here, it's been pretty busy. Just, I keep printing these bases on it. These are the table base mounts for the helping hand. So, so it's been printing those parts. So we're, we've been trying to keep things going. These four printers up here are set up and ready to go, but we're gonna wait until Monday and uh, first of the week we'll start printing lap diners on those also. So we'll have, let's see, two, four, six, eight. We'll end up with 10 printers printing the large lap diner piece and four, five printers printing the cup holder. And we'll be reaching a pretty good inventory on those cup holder parts. So we'll probably take at least two of those printers and start printing the uh, lap diner. The lap diner, it takes 24 hours to print one side. So it takes 48 hours to print, basically to print the right and left side. If you're gonna produce very many of them, you're gonna to have to have a, quite a few printers running. And we are getting ready to, next week, we'll be putting the other shelf up down there, like this one, where we'll be able to get more printers on it. And then we're going to assemble some more of the A-nets, A8s, which have a 330 by 330 build plate. So we'll have a more capacity there and we'll be able to print more parts on those. Of course, those printers will then start running for three or four days or more continuous. But our power situation's pretty stable, so I think we can deal with that. So that's a little bit about what's been going on down here. I didn't want to want you to think I'd forgotten about you but we've just been really busy getting all of this stuff together. We've got a lot more filament in and we're trying to organize a lot of it because we do have different types, and different colors because of some of the different products that we're printing and shipping. Up to this point, I've been doing all the shipping from the other location and now we're in the process of setting this area up here so that we'll be able to actually do some of the packing of the helping hands and the lap diners down here. And out in the large area, we're going to go out there and start working on creating an area out there for assembly. It's just gotten too crowded at the house and in my bonus room to do that stuff. I do have a little more help. <laughs> you know, we talked about <laughs> how I'm doing everything by myself. And I actually had someone in here for three hours. He comes in about three hours almost every day during the week, works nine to 12 that works in with his school schedule. And he uh, was here for three hours and helped with taking parts off of these printers and starting new jobs, doing some of the test printing for level tests and so forth. So I do have a little more help there. And then I have another person that comes in every afternoon at six o'clock and works a couple of hours and that allows me to come back down here and work on other projects like that area out there where we were setting that up for shipping and he'll be here this evening and we'll be doing some more work he uh, also took a lot of our rods our steel rods that we use for the helping hand 
the base unit, there's a box here, and you can see a lot of these steel rods. And what he did, he actually took them, I had already cut them up into the proper lengths, and he took them out in the shop area and used the grinder to round off the ends and deburr them. And then after that, used 99% alcohol mixture that we have and cleaned the oil and dirt and debris and so forth off of them put them in a jig for painting and then took them outside and spray painted them so those are all ready to go now we have enough there for about i think about 30 or 40 table mount helping hands next week he'll be putting those together so we can start boxing them up anyway that's what's going on down here i still have that video that i've made where i compared this creality ender 3 with this anet et4 i have the raw video i had to do some multiple comparison prints I did one, but I didn't feel that it was conclusive. I think you have to be fair and do multiple print jobs under different conditions and so forth to see how they really compare, stack up against each other. And as soon as I have time to edit that video, put it together, I'll post that video, and we'll just see how well the creality does and how well the ain't it does right now both of them do an excellent job of printing they're both set up correctly and they print their parts flawlessly i don't have to restart any of them and that's another reason these have almost a full roll of filament on it because i'll just keep printing i don't have to use the filament counter to take off a certain amount because it's going to just keep printing and printing and the same part over and over with the same filament so we'll just leave it on the spool and until the spools run out and that's when we'll quit making these parts it's been a little warm lately the temperatures at night are usually in the 30s but with 15 printers or more going we're able to maintain temperatures of around the 80 degree mark and without any other heat just the heat from the printers will keep it pretty warm in here and like i said in other videos i i like to maintain an ambient temperature around these printers of around 80 degrees when they're printing because that's what we set everything up for and if it's very much colder than that or a lot hotter than that then that's going to affect the print and the way the filament lays down and we have about 50 printers in here now and when we get the other shelf up we'll be up around 60. that's my maximum capacity just for the heck of it i'd like to see 60 printers all running at the same time in here my plans are not to have 60 printers running at the same time but we are capable of it here and just for the heck of it i'd probably like to do it at least one time but i think even after we get the all 60 printers set up and ready that keeping up with production will probably be only running somewhere between 20 and 30 printers on average at a time because like I had mentioned before some of these printers are dedicated to printing just one or two parts and when we have enough of those parts then they sit idle until it's time to print more of those parts. The reason I do that is because I know that all I have to do is go push a button, turn the power on, load the filament, and push go, and it's gonna print those parts 
without any flaws and I'll have them ready to go the next day. And that's my just-in-time system. So until the next time, happy printing from New Tech Inventors.